You may now begin. Unemployment has joined corruption and poverty as the most talked about topics across the globe. The number of young long-term jobless in Britain has almost doubled in the last two years. We've encouraged different cultures to live separate lives. There are practical things that we can do as well. That includes making sure that immigrants speak the language of their new home. Around the world, one and a half billion people do not have access to mains electricity. When the sun goes down, they're forced to rely on kerosene lamps. These are expensive, produce toxic fumes, and are dangerous. Sierra Leone was consumed by a brutal conflict. The war killed more than 50,000 people. Rice, the country's number one staple and most important crop. Domestic production faces a long list of challenges. The shortage of machinery and the shortage of cash or business loans. Global news channels constantly show us images of social inequality, deprivation, and extreme poverty. These are just three issues that our side team has this year aimed to address. We will now share our story with you. Good afternoon. My name is Amy Flavel, Project Leader of Bright Light. I'm Chris Coles, President of this year's side team. My name is Zoe Fiddler, and I'm the incoming Local Vice President. I'm Anna Grant, Project Leader of Wise Mind. My name is Will Churchill, I'm the Enterprise Project Leader. I'm Charlotte Pierce, incoming president. Along with Mike Austin, our social vice president, we represent the University of Southampton side team. At Side Southampton, our operational model focuses on building sustainable partnerships, ensuring our financial freedom, and the creation of truly empowering solutions. Our entrepreneurial approach ensures our financial sustainability by running two profitable businesses. These are Hooday, a personalised clothing company, and Consultancy, a student-run professional research provider. Together, this year, they have generated over £15,000 in vegetable profits. Our commercial success also allows us to take a longer-term view to our sustainability and enabled us to create the Sci Southampton Sustainability Fund. Operating as a cash reserve, our team has already assigned an initial £2,500 this year. At the heart of our social projects is the way we create partnerships to help deliver our projects and ensure their success. Comprehensive planning assures our partners share our vision and have previous experience of helping those in need. Once we find a partner, we initiate a formal contractual agreement which will full cooperation and accountability. This is followed by hours of communication in person, through Skype, email and telephone. Our partnerships allow us to meet our community needs effectively and eliminate the need to travel abroad. This maintains a low carbon footprint and reduces project costs, while still providing our participants with a constant physical support. Together, our financial freedom and partnerships have allowed us to successfully tackle needs in our combination of five local and four international social projects. To create the greatest depth of impact, our projects not only consider the relevant social, economic and environmental factors, but also aim to address the UN Millennium Development Goals throughout. We will now share three of our projects with you. To help guide you for our presentation, we have provided a timeline for you on the right hand side of the screen. Wise Mind, helping young people develop the skills and confidence to realise their potential. Our home of Southampton is a city of opportunity for many, yet it still suffers from inequality, high employment rates and an education system that fails to cater to all. This leaves a lost generation of 16 to 24 year olds not in education, employment or training known as NEETS. Collectively, NEETS costs the UK taxpayer £3.6 billion a year through welfare payments, youth crime and lost productivity. Individually, however, these young adults are felt with a culture of unemployment and low aspirations, which devastates their self-confidence. This is the story for one in every ten young people in Southampton, a story that Wisemind aims to rewrite. Considering these social and economic factors, we conduct our needs assessment by evaluating last year's Wisemind project, using detailed questionnaires and interviews with past students, and a continued discussion with our existing project partner, City Horizons. They provide bridging courses for young people who lack the basic education needed for college entry and are unable to find employment. WiseMind is our entrepreneurial programme that teaches business and economic concepts for the creation of a real business. We respond to the needs of our participants who require formal qualifications, 
experience and skills to showcase and introduce, and essential self-confidence. Considering these social factors, this year we expanded WiseMind from a four to a six week programme, providing participants with greater educational content and units towards a formal edXL qualification. The first three weeks teach essential business concepts whilst building their self-confidence through team building games. The participants then choose a product to sell and design their own marketing and financial strategies. The fourth week is a practical selling task on our university campus. Participants use their new skills in teams to sell their products and speak to new people. In week five, participants write their own business plan, allowing them to positively reflect on their development into confident and capable individuals. The final week covers CV and interview techniques, showing participants how to use their wise mind experiences and new skills, such as leadership, teamwork and business acumen, to stand out to potential employers. This year, for the transfer of business and economic concepts, WiseMind has empowered 54 participants to run six micro-enterprises, generating over £300 in profit, ensuring the project's financial sustainability. Through WiseMind, our participants have increased quality of life through the skills, confidence and formal qualifications they have obtained to pursue further education and gain employment. Having seen the transformation of these 54 young people, we were inspired to use our concept to address a further need. Southampton has an increasingly diverse population and our project partner, Southampton City College, has seen a growing number of international students, many of whom struggle to integrate into their new home. Considering this social factor, we run a focus group with eight young migrants and found that whilst they have access to English language courses, they lack the opportunities to practice their spoken English outside of the classroom. They therefore suffer from a greater lack of confidence in their native peers further isolating them from the community and reducing their employment prospects. To meet the needs of eight young migrants, we adapted WiseMind, first lengthening the course to eight weeks, where they learn new business vocabulary and gradually build confidence in speaking English. Secondly, the practical selling task was moved to their college, challenging them to use their improved spoken English outside of the classroom by interacting with other students. Finally, we run employability sessions, covering the whole process of finding a job in Britain. By engaging our business advisors, we provided participants with the opportunity to develop their professional manner in a mock business environment. Through our adapted WiseMind programme, all eight of our participants' core needs have been addressed by boosting their self-confidence, increasing their interaction with their peers and transforming their employability. Six participants are progressing on to further education, whilst WiseMind has empowered one participant to find employment and inspired another to even start her own business. Carolina's story is a great example of WiseMind's positive impact. Inspired by the business planning sessions, she approached us with her idea for a jewellery business. The business concepts and experiences gained from the WiseMind course have enabled Carolina to formulate an initial business plan and strategy. Using her reinvested selling task profits, topped up by an additional site Southampton investment, we plan to launch her business shortly, empowering Carolina to support herself as she pursues her long-term goals. WiseMind has developed our eight participants into ambitious, self-assured young people who are confident in their spoken English. Help it build their confidence, they know that they can do it, that they have the skills, the organisational skills, mm -hmm. the soft skills that are still so important. Mm -hmm. And to ask my own business, they have a plan, they have a plan, they have a plan. Just let me try. Yeah. 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 Collectively, our two Wise Mind programme have this year transformed the lives of 62 of our city's young people. For next year's expansion, we have partnered with Southampton Job Centre Plus, utilising our skills and experience to empower even more young people to start their journey towards a brighter future. This side year, WiseMind has ensured its financial sustainability through running seven profitable short-term micro-enterprises. This year, eight young migrants have developed the communication skills and confidence to interact with their peers leading to an increased standard of living for one participant who has found employment and another who has even begun to start her own business. This year, 54 former needs have achieved formal NXL qualifications, gaining the skills, experience and confidence necessary to progress onto further education, thus increasing their quality of life. 
Wise Mind has this year given 62 young people a brighter future in our shared home of Southampton. Right Light provide affordable access to solar power across rural East Africa. In the UK, having access to electricity is often taken for granted. However, for 1.7 billion people across the world, the only alternative to living in darkness are expensive and toxic kerosene lamps. Families using kerosene suffer from respiratory illnesses as they inhale the equivalent of 40 cigarettes per day. In a small village in rural Madagascar lives Gilbert. He spends 25% of his income on kerosene. At Sly Southampton, we help families like Gilbert's by providing a cheaper, brighter and sustainable light source, solar lamps. Each kerosene lamp emits 0.2 tonnes of carbon dioxide each year. Replacing these with solar lamps therefore provides an environmental benefit. Right like began last life year, carrying out a detailed needs assessment in three Madagascan communities, conducting surveys and community meetings to assess the need for solar lamps. Our results confirmed all of the problems associated with parity. After detailed research, we partnered with Feedback Madagascar, an NGO with the local knowledge we needed, and Tough Stuff, a supplier of resilient and reliable solar lamps. Tough Stuff supplies solar lamps at £11. However, for families like Gilbert's who earn only £8 per month, this is an unaffordable amount to invest in one payment. Considering this economic factor, last year we set up a microfinance repayment scheme empowering participants to own a solar lamp by repaying in small amounts. However, there were still some who could not afford the repayment and access the benefits of solar power. Considering this social factor, we invested repayments into creating solar lamp entrepreneurs who rent solar lamps to the very poorest. Motivated to provide a better life for his family, Gilbert was our first entrepreneur this year. We provided Gilbert with a loan to purchase 10 solar lamps at which he repays at 25% of his monthly revenue. Gilbert rents the lamps to community members at just four pence per night. With kerosene costing six pence, this provides a saving of a third, increasing their standard of living through greater disposable income. This makes basics such as medical supplies and school fees affordable, therefore increasing their quality of life. We wrote a detailed education pack teaching Gilbert business and economic concepts on how to run a sustainable business. This included information on basic accounting, marketing, stockkeeping and reinvestment strategies. This was delivered by our partner Feedback Madagascar, who we provided with a detailed lesson plan to ensure all information was covered and fully understood. To assess right light's impact, we conducted follow-up surveys and collected testimonials. We found that Gilbert's successful business has empowered him to earn an extra £10 each month, doubling his household earnings and ensuring he can provide a brighter future for his family. This year, alongside Gilbert, we have set up a further four entrepreneurs in Madagascar, meaning 50 families now have access to power at night transforming the lives of 385 people. This year we have expanded Right Light from running in three to eight Madagascan communities. Reaching all the villages Feedback Madagascar work with, we have now further expanded our project. During discussion with a friend of mine, Booker Ogutu, he informed me about the huge need for solar lamps in Kenya. Our needs assessment showed that 80% of Kenyans rely on kerosene and that more women in rural Kenya die as a result of kerosene than they do of malaria and tuberculosis. These social factors confirm the need for affordable access to solar power in Kenya. To implement our concept, we partnered with Booker's NGO, EcoFinder Kenya, and continued our partnership with Puffstuff's Kenya offices. Recognising how important corporate social responsibility has become to modern business, we took an entrepreneurial approach to funding our expansion. We established a site of the project called Light for Life. By targeting investment from businesses, we seek to integrate Right Light into their corporate social responsibility plans. Any funding these businesses provide is then directly invested into new entrepreneurs. Quickly buying into our vision, a renewable energy company, Eco2, saw the benefits of Right Light, investing £2,000 into the Light for Life scheme. With this investment, we have set up eight entrepreneurs in Kenya, which meaning again providing each with a loan for 10 solar lamps and empowering them with essential business knowledge. This means 
440 people now have access to affordable solar power. To further develop the businesses and their whole communities, we diversified the use of the solar panels. Across Africa, mobile phones are helping lift millions out of poverty, but rural communities often lack required charging facilities. We have begun supplying our entrepreneurs with mobile phone adapters for the solar panels, providing a second source of revenue, further ensuring their financial sustainability and growth. Together, the business diversification, repayments and light of a life scheme have ensured right like sustainability and scalability. This side year, across Madagascar and Kenya, we have empowered 13 entrepreneurs to improve their standard of living by building their own profitable and independent businesses. This year, we have improved our participants' quality of life by eliminating the health burden of 154 toxic kerosene lamps reducing reported respiratory problems by 75%. This year, 575 children can now study into the night under the bright light of their solar lamps, transforming their educational prospects and helping them break the cycle of poverty. This year, we have saved 31 tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions, the equivalent of flying to Kenya and back 22 times. Bright Light has provided 154 families with affordable access to solar power, this year, transforming the lives of 923 people. Enterprise, combining agricultural investment and community development to improve the lives of Sierra Leone farmers. Sierra Leone is one of the poorest countries in the world. An 11-year civil war devastated the country, decimating opportunities and destroying its infrastructure. This has left its economy and its people in ruin. But at Side Southampton, we recognise Sierra Leone's potential and with no side programme in the country, we knew that we could make a difference. Using surveys and questionnaires, our needs assessment found a large population suffering from unemployment. Many others struggled with a low working wage of just 70p a day, leaving them below the poverty line with no room for saving or investment. Furthermore, despite having vast quantities of land available, current farming methods were inefficient, requiring use of expensive and environmentally damaging fertilisers. Considering these relevant social, economic and environmental factors, we developed an agricultural project to respond to these needs. After extensive research, we partnered with the NGO Planting Promise, due to their understanding of farming and their work in Sierra Leone. Our initial two-stage programme first provided a capital investment loan for the community and then transferred business knowledge. The first stage provided a loan to purchase a power tiller, a machine which prepares the ground for planting. This was delivered to a cooperative of 100 farmers run by Planting Promise and enabled the use of 300% more farmland. This increase in the rice yield of the community farms led to higher revenues. The higher productivity allowed us to split the revenue from the community farms four ways. 43% continues to fund our partners' operations. 10% repays the initial loan, ensuring the project's sustainability. 22% is paid to the farmers as a wage, leaving 25% for the founding of a community development fund. This system allows planting promise to increase the wage of the farmers, whilst also providing additional employment. But we wanted to go one step further and develop the business skills of the community. Through our needs assessment, we found that as well as working on the community farms, the workers also had their own small holdings, black business knowledge and resources to unlock the potential of their land. This economic consideration drives us to establish a second phase to our project. Building on our side team's past successes, we modified and updated education packs used in other projects. Delivered by Planting Promise, these taught relevant business and economic concepts, including the basics of saving, reinvestment and keeping simple accounting records. This empowered the new entrepreneurs to develop their own micro-businesses, using their personal small holdings to generate a surplus of crops. This year's pilot scheme of the programme has seen the establishment of six new micro-businesses, providing their families with an independent source of income. The farmers have been empowered with new knowledge on sustainable farming, and with their new equipment in place, we have increased the total yield of the community farms by eight tonnes, more than doubling last year's harvest. Through Enterprise's involvement, the wages of 100 farmers have increased from 70p to £1.20 a day, increasing their standard of living. This higher disposable income means they can now buy essential commodities, improving their quality of life. In addition to raising these wages, we have also provided new employment to an additional 60 people. 
Rather than farming solely to eat, their families now benefit from financial security, improving their standard of living. Building on our success with the farmers, we wanted to develop the project further and impact the whole community. We therefore took an entrepreneurial approach to implement a third stage to our project, founding a community development fund. This uses 25% of the increased revenue from the community farms to respond to further social and economic needs, providing a long-term holistic impact. The fund is democratically controlled by the community, empowering them to start their journey towards long-term self-reliance. Many families struggle to access education. Considering this social factor, this year the fund has been used to sponsor 33 children through primary education. Using questionnaires and interviews to evaluate enterprise's progress, we found that our initial concept works, yet we were driven to make an even greater impact. Our team has already developed a further stage to the project after identifying a more efficient system for planting than the current broadcast method. This is known as System of Rice Intensification, or SRI. We have developed training packs to send to the farmers, instructing them on how to implement this method to further increase their rice yields. During our consideration of relevant environmental factors, we also found that crop diversification can mitigate rice's removal of nitrogen from the soil. Im implementing both crop diversification and SRI eliminates the need for artificial fertilisers. This has a positive environmental impact, reduces farming costs and provides a further opportunity for income through an additional crop harvest. The farmers have already started planting this season's crops using both of these techniques and we look forward to sharing the results of this with you next year. This scythe year, 33 children can now benefit from sponsored education, improving their quality of life thanks to the establishment of the Community Development Fund. <laughs> this year, through the establishment of six new micro-businesses, the owners have doubled their revenue, increasing income for their households. This year, Enterprise has increased the wage of 100 farmers by over 70% and provided new employment to an additional 60 people, dramatically improving their standard of living. This year, land is being used in a more environmentally friendly manner by eliminating the use of artificial fertilisers. Through working with 105 families, creating educational and employment opportunities through an innovative approach to community development, this year, Enterprise has transformed over 1,000 lives. This year, our side team has inspired, improved and transformed the lives of others. At Sci Southampton, through our innovative solutions, we have addressed six of the eight Millennium Development Goals. This means that all of our projects contribute to the universal goal to eradicate global poverty. This time here, WiseMind has empowered 62 youths in our local area with confidence to pursue further education and employment. This site here, Brightline, has created 13 sustainable businesses and given 923 people affordable access to solar power. This year, Enterprise has doubled the community's price yield, increased employment opportunities for 160 individuals and transformed the lives of over 1,000 people. and you wisely use in your projects local partners. The, my question is really, how do you distinguish between what the local partner does and what you do? So let's say for Enterprise, for example, what was your contribution? Okay, so with, uh, with Enterprise, with the Sierra Leone project, um, the partner organisation that we have, uh, Planting Promise, they are in charge of the cooperatives of farmers um, within the area. 
our involvement with them, um, we have been able to uh, impart knowledge that we can give to them. So they're helping with running the running of day-to-day -day running of the farms. Um, we're able to then provide business and education knowledge using our, our kind of proven methods that we use from our other projects. So Wise Mind and Right Life, we can adapt those. Also, we're looking into SRI. Um, we're very proud that we have a, a diverse range of students within our society and part of that is it means that we can do a lot of academic research so we can do a lot of the, the kind of the research based side of things um, that Planting Promise aren't able to do. Thank you. In addition to Will's comment there as well, the, the key thing that our partners provide that we can't is that constant physical support. So all year round, uh, if we need things implemented, they're there on the ground. Whereas if we were to fly out there, if we can only do that on sporadic occasions. A question at the back? Uh, yes, Nick Powell from Energizer. Um, as far as consultancy is concerned, I mean, that seems to be a very successful re uh, revenue generator for you. What is it you're actually doing within that? So with our consultancy projects, over the last three years we've worked closely with our university doing academic research. So in our first year we did a project on learning spaces which generated around £22,000 revenue and £4,500 profit. In our second year, we did a contract on the postgraduate experience um, that came in at £9,000 re uh, £9, revenue with a profit of about uh, £7,000, I think. And this year we did a contract on assessment and feedback, which is really important to the university in terms of its NSS score scores. Uh, that was £10,200 revenue at a profit of approximately £8,000. Thank you. Mike Nagro with Enterprise rent car on your uh, right light project, I was curious, uh, do you, are you seeing success in the repayment of your loans to those entrepreneurs? Um, with our right light project, um, our entrepreneurs have been very successful so far because we have a flexible repayment process. Um, they repay back to us 25% of their monthly revenue, so um, it enables them to be flexible so they can repay as much as they are earning, so we're not taking profits away from them if, for example, there was a month where they weren't quite as successful as previous. Hello again. Uh, Alan Moore from Psych UK. Um, so, uh, a question which I think I asked last year, um, but I want to see what the answer is this year. Um, we talked about, or you talked about the, for uh, Right Light, you talked about the supplier and about using uh, Tough Stuff to provide the, the unit. Um, have you looked at other suppliers in terms of driving down their cost? And did Tough Stuff's involvement with Kenya move you into that market, or was that something that you saw independently? Um, we, uh, we did a thorough needs assessment when choosing our solar lamp suppliers, and we found Tough Stuff actually are cheaper than the leading competitor in the market, and also because stuff, Tough Stuff specialise in providing solar lamps to the developing world. Um, we thought that they were the ideal supplier and they've been very, very efficient for us this year. With regards to moving into Kenya, we conducted our needs assessment first and um, there, we found the huge need in Kenya with 80% of kerosene, 80% um, of Kenyans relying on kerosene fuel and um, tough stuff work in multiple countries around the world. So it was, um, it was um, excellent that our supplier already worked there, so it was we conducted the needs assessment first and then decided to use tough stuff. Maggie Crompton, HSBC. Um, in your right light project, you make some claims around the amount of carbon that you've reduced. I just wondered how you'd actually measured that. Okay, so those estimates are based on the fact that each, uh, each kerosene lamp emits 0.2 tonnes of carbon dioxide each year and with the 154 kerosene lamps that we have now saved, that equates to a total of 31 tonnes of carbon dioxide. The time has expired. Um, please join me in thanking Simon from Southampton.